There is one final area of false Christianity that deserves a little bit more attention, simply because it's emerging from within biblical Christianity and leading many astray, the emerging or emergent church movement. This is a very powerful deception because it contains so much truth, and those who are not aware of Babylonian ideas will find them very hard to spot, as they are subtly interwoven into the movement. If left unchecked, it threatens to draw many away from the faith and to contribute towards the great falling away prophesied about in the period prior to Christ's return. The general idea behind the emergent church is that the postmodern era has produced a culture shift and that the way we think of Christianity, therefore, also has to change to stay relevant to that culture. Leith Anderson wrote, The only way to cope and be effective during this period of structural change in society is to change some of the ways we view our world and the church. It is what some might call a paradigm shift, a new way of looking at something. Such a shift will allow us to view our changing world with a new perspective. It is like a map. Old maps from the 1950s may have sufficed before the construction of interstate highways and the expansion of major cities, but new maps are needed now. Likewise, we need a new paradigm for the future. So basically, the Christianity of the modern era is no use in the postmodern era. Instead, they want to blend postmodernism with Christianity, to take the postmodern ideas we've been looking at, ideas that unity is more important than truth, that we can have different beliefs that are equally valid, or at least no one can be sure of who has the truth, that we can play a part in building a one-world utopian society, that the here and now is more important than eternity, and that Christianity should therefore be primarily concerned about social justice and unity with Catholicism and other religions. Because they know that the truth is divisive, they hate the concept of absolute right and wrong, and will instead ask endless questions. To them, their questions never lead to solutions, but merely to more questions, and they seem to like it that way. They think that this is enlightened thinking. Because the second you claim to have an answer to those questions, you have become arrogant and divisive, and may offend someone else's idea of truth. Because they never reach a conclusion or settle on absolute statements, they also talk a lot about conversation. Conversation is a key word for the emergent church. They ignore the wise advice of G.K. Chesterton when he says, The point of having an open mind, like an open mouth, is to close it again on something solid. They don't like solid things, they don't like absolutes, which is why it has been said that trying to define the emergent church is like trying to nail jelly, or jello if you're American, to a wall. As soon as you try and pin them down on something, they'll shift their position. They have very basically swallowed the lies from the spirit of the postmodern age and have mixed them with Christianity, in much the same way Catholicism mixed the pollution of the pagan culture that surrounded it in Rome. Catholicism partly did this to make the Christian message more palatable to the pagan culture, and the emergent movement is doing much the same thing, watering down or removing the truth altogether to create unity with the world. The whole emergent movement can be traced back several decades, but it really picked up speed in the mid-1990s. Mark Driscoll, the pastor of Mars Hill Church in Seattle, was involved in the movement in those days. He says, in the mid-1990s, I was a young church planter trying to establish a church in the city of Seattle when I got a call to speak at my first conference. It was hosted by Leadership Network and focused on the subject of Generation X. Out of that conference, a small team was formed to continue conversing about postmodernism. By this time, Leadership Network hired Doug Paget to lead the team and organize the events. He began growing the team and it soon included Brian McLaren. Paget, McLaren and others such as Chris Say, Tony Jones, Dan Kimball and Andrew Jones stayed together and continued speaking and writing together as friends. That team eventually morphed into what is now known as Emergent. Those are just some of the names you'll hear along with the likes of Rob Bell and Tony Campolo amongst others and they are unfortunately accepted and promoted in many evangelical circles. Hopefully this study will have allowed you to see clearly how Satan is using this as part of his agenda. Here are some quotes. Tony Jones said, Emergent doesn't have a position on absolute truth, or on anything for that matter. Do you show up at a dinner party with your neighbours and ask, what's this dinner party's position on absolute truth? No, you don't, because it's a nonsensical question. Tony Jones again said, This is actually about changing theology. 
This is about our belief that theology changes. The message of the gospel changes. It's not just the method that changes. So instead of the biblical truth changing our culture, his idea is that culture should change the biblical truth. In fact, he doesn't believe that the Bible has any objective truth at all. So we must stop looking for some objective truth that is available when we delve into the text of the Bible. Brian McLaren repeats this idea when he says, Let me offer ten suggestions for reclaiming the Bible for contemporary readers. Drop any affair you may have with certainty. None of us can be certain of anything and the Bible can be interpreted any way an individual likes. And who is to say which interpretation is correct? The truth can't be known. This means that everyone is free to do exactly what they like and to adapt the Bible to fit with their individual concepts of truth. Rob Bell backs this up when he says, Anytime someone makes you feel guilty about how you are living, that is part of the old system. What Rob Bell is effectively saying is to let each other do what they want to do. He is in fact promoting the satanic maxim, do what thy wilt shall be the whole of the law. Tony Jones in fact recommended ripping out parts of the Bible that would oppose this worldview, at least temporarily when he said, maybe some evangelicals should tear the book of Romans out of their Bibles and read a Romans free Bible for a few years, then they can paste it back in. Josh Reich talks about globalism and embracing Babylonian mysticism when he says, Some of the values of the emerging church are an emphasis on emotions, global outlook, a rise in the use of arts, and a rise in mysticism and spirituality. These words are dripping with the spirit of the age, and you should clearly be able to see from the study how they are designed to draw Christians into the new world order by causing them to abandon biblical truths with a new type of Christianity that is more earth-centred, embraces other faiths and ideas of truth, and which promotes the idea of contributing towards the man-made utopia. We'll look some more at this in the next couple of parts.